Srila Prabhupada also discussed a lot about spiritual communism. But I will first briefly talk about the Marxist communism and Srila Prabhupada's arguments against it. This is just for your understanding, so that will set the backdrop for the main topic of spiritual communism. I see. So, for some time, just listen now. Okay. So, first, the Marxist communism. According to Marx, the industrial revolution divided the society into two classes. The bourgeoisie, those who have money, the capitalist or the property owners, and proletariat, the working class. Marx condemned the capitalists for making profit. He says that profit making is exploitation and that the capitalists are unnecessary for the production of commodities. The capitalists are parasites living on the cost of the workers. He says that capitalism is a decadent form of economic production because it relies on the exploitation of one class by another. So, we need to change the system. The workers will overthrow the capitalist class and establish a so-called dictatorship of workers which will finally become a classless society. Well, Marx's idea is that means of production will be owned in common. No one will have advantage over anyone else and thus one person could not exploit another. And what's the proposed system? According to philosophy given by Nikolai Lenin, one of the followers of Karl Marx, he says that everything is material. Their philosophy is gross materialism. Everything exists for us and everything exists for my use. The goal is thus production of material goods for the enhancement of human well-being. Industrial and scientific work is thus the highest point of activity. Thus, by putting a man in the factory, and making him identify with the state and something like scientific achievement, they think they can transform him into a selfless person. If everyone is engaged according to his ability in a certain type of production and everyone works for the central interest, then everyone's idea will become uniform. And what is the center? The state. The state will be the center. The central interest. According to the Communist Manifesto given by Karl Marx, there should be heavy progressive income tax. So if you make more, you pay more. There should be abolition of all rights for inheritance. The abolition of private property, all money, all communication, transportation, everything should be centralized in the hands of the state. All production will be centralized and the state will distribute it freely to everyone as per individual needs. It will be a social system where everyone gets the same amount and no one gets excess. Since everyone is serving the state, the sweeper is as good as the administrator. There will be a classless society. The communists theorize that if the workers contribute to the central fund, he will get satisfaction in return. Sounds good? Problem. How to engage people in the factory? How to get them to work? According to Karl Marx's philosophy, he says human nature has no reality. Man's reality or man's nature changes through history according to material conditions. Their program is first to change the social conditions, then the mentality will change with it. Marx thinks that the minds of the people can be changed by forced conditioning. Therefore, everyone can be trained to participate in a classless society. The motto is, from each according to his ability, to each according to his needs. One of their methods is to constantly whip people with the idea that there may be a war at any moment. So people are always thinking, we must protect our country. So they work. Or say, your home may be in danger, your family may be lost if you don't work. So this negative stress will make them work. Also there is a positive push. The workers who produce most units in his factory is glorified by the state and receives a small bonus as an incentive to his hard work. So the training, the negative stress and incentives will make people identify themselves with the state 
the production and the scientific achievement and thus they will work for the state selflessly getting satisfaction and happiness in return. This is communism. But property feeds this philosophy. Look how he does it. Really? Yes. Let's see one by one. Marx presumes that exploitation is owing to a wrong system called capitalism. So by changing the system from capitalism to communism, there will be no exploitation. And Prabhupada's point is that exploitation has to do with human tendency and not with social system. Unless the human tendency to exploit does not change, merely changing the system from capitalism to communism will not change anything. Profit making may be wrong. Prabhupada says, profit making may be wrong, but the exploitative tendency is there, whether it is a communist or a capitalist system. I know a mill worker who acquired some money. Then he became the proprietor of the mill and took advantage of his good fortune to become a capitalist. So, to greater or less degree, the propensity is always there in the human nature to exploit others and become wealthy. Unless this mentality is changed, there is no point in changing from capitalist to a communist society. Regarding classless society, Prabhupada's point is that classless society is not possible because by nature people fall into different classes and artificially they cannot be brought into the same level. Prabhupada says, everyone's contribution is different. A scientific man contributes something and a philosopher contributes something else. The cow contributes milk and the dog contributes service as a watchdog. Even the trees, the birds, the bees, everyone is contributing something. So by nature, a reciprocal arrangement is already amongst the social classes. How can there be a classless society? Marx presumes that happiness of human society depends on economic production. And Prabhupada's point is that a real happiness depends on peace of mind, not economic production. Prabhupada says, the practical example is America, where there is sufficient production of everything and yet young men are becoming hippies. Economic production in America is no comparison in the world and yet still people are dissatisfied. The young men are confused. It is nonsensical to think that simply by increasing the production, everyone will become satisfied. No one will become satisfied. Man is not meant simply for eating. He has mental necessities, intellectual necessities, spiritual necessities. It is animalistic to think that simply by increasing production, everyone will become satisfied. Real happiness does not depend either on production or starvation, but upon peace of mind. Marx has his idea of what is human well-being. And Prabhupada's point is that human well-being is a relative term. Human well-being means, if you don't agree to me, I cut your throat, that's all. Just like Stalin, he was thinking in his own way, human well-being. But anyone who disagrees with him, cut his throat. Then he announced like that. Just like he killed the royal family. So this killing, they will say it is human well-being. So that is not well-being for the royal family. But they theorized, it's well-being. Thus, human well-being is a relative term. Marx presumes that economic production makes people happy. But Popeye's point is that we practically see that Marx's idea isn't working. These things are not applied. Like Prabhupada says, in his times, at least we have seen in Moscow, all big big buildings, they are not recent buildings. They are old, damaged buildings. So that means economic condition is not so sound. The old buildings are not very nicely renovated. We have seen, Russia is not happy. They are simply waiting for another opportunity, another revolution. Marx thinks that he will force condition people by whipping propaganda or by incentives to be selfless and work for the state. Then Prabhupada's point is that this tendency of profit making can't be destroyed by force and people just can't be forced to be selfless by law. About incentive of bonus, Prabhupada says, why should he get bonus? just to satisfy his tendency to lord it over others and make profit his superiors bribe him. Prabhupada says, the Russian communist idea is very good, provided the citizens do not want any profit. But that is impossible, because everyone wants profit. The state cannot destroy this tendency either by law or by force. Then they expect to get people to think, nothing in my favor, everything in favor of the state. But people will never accept this idea. It is impossible. Let the rascals try it. All they can do is simply force the people to work. As Stalin did, as soon as he found someone oppose him, he immediately cut his throat. <laughs> that is not possible. Even a child cannot be convinced by force. What to speak of a mature educated man? Thus, selflessness 
can not be forced marx thinks that by making state as the center the corruption will stop but popper's point is that but the flaw is that if the man in the center is envious and not perfect corruption will continue robert says there is exploitation in the communist countries also corvoche was driven out of power because he was exploiting his position he was giving big big government post to his son and son in laws since any leader can deviate how will perfection come first the person in the center must be perfect then his dictations will be correct otherwise if the leaders are imperfect what is the use of changing this so that corruption will continue and if the center is not perfect then people will not be happy robert says why should a sweeper be satisfied saving someone else and the administrative post he will think he is forcing me to work as a sweeper in the street while he sits comfortably in a chair robert gives his own example robert says in our international society i am holding the superior post i am sitting in a chair and you are offering me garlands and best food why because you see a perfect man whom you can follow jack prabhat that mentality must be there everyone in the society must be able to say yes here is a perfect man let him sit on the chair and let us bow down and work like menials where is that perfect man in the communist countries if a man sees imperfection in the center he will not work enthusiastically because he will have no faith that he will get full satisfaction that perfect state will never be there and therefore workers will always remain dissatisfied if people are dissatisfied there will always be distinction between different classes and so a classless society will not be possible regarding abolition of rights of inheritance propart says it is another nonsensical proposal because everyone's tendency is to give money to his children that is the law everywhere i have got some affection for my children i want to give something to my children so how can you stop this they are all proposing impractical in marx's communism he wants to give everyone the same amount but the point is that if people cannot make any profit on their work however they will eventually lose interest in the country propart says marshall's theory is that economic development is based on family affection the average man will think whether i work or not i get the same result i cannot adequately feed or clothe my family then he will begin to lose incentive to his work a scientist will see that despite his high position his wife and children are just dressed like a common laborer so he will be reluctant to work for the state and if everything is centralized like the money the property communication and transportation is centralized in the hands of the state then being plagued with the tendency to exploit the members of the state will exploit it propart says so what profit will be the members in the central they will exploit just like corvoche was doing so our diagnosis is that the tendency is there unless you reform that tendency these things will be bogus how shall you stop the mentality and since the person in the center is envious there will always be exploitation and there will be never equal distribution robert says any system of organizing means of production is bound to be full of exploitation wherever there is materialistic activity there must be imperfection the person in the center must have no envy but that perfection is not possible in the material world therefore marx's theories are useless marx says that human nature is no reality and that it changes through history according to material conditions but proper point is that man's nature changing through history is not a very advanced philosophy but what marx does not know is that real human nature never changes propart says he does not know that real human nature never changes it is certainly true that everything in the cosmic creation or jagat is changing your body changes daily everything is changing just like waves in the ocean This is not very advanced philosophy. Marx's theory is also being changed. It cannot last. But man does have a fundamental nature that never changes. His spiritual nature that Marx does not know. Marx thinks that if first he changes the social condition, then the mentality of the people will change. Then Propart says that it's impossible. It will simply react and there will be another revolution. So if you change the mentality then the social structure will change you first change the mentality then then the social structure will change unless i am trained to think that i do not possess anything and everything belongs to the state it will not work but it is very difficult to change simply nonsense that's why marx's idea 
will not work. That was the end of Marx's philosophy. So let's discuss now communism, the spiritual communism. So basically, communism is a reaction or the, or a result of capitalism. They did not like the capitalism, so they came up with communism. Actually, we support neither communism nor capitalism, nor do we advocate the adoption of pseudo religions. We are only for Krishna. We are neither for capitalism nor for so-called communism, or not for so-called religion. Also, we are only for Krishna, the supreme personality of Godhead. Mm -hmm. We were discussing the Marxist philosophy, but we don't accept either Mao or Marx. We don't accept them, anyone. Why are you discussing them? Discussing to defeat their philosophy, because their philosophy is accepted in the world. So we are giving the weak points of that philosophy. When I, they simply say I am dogmatic, but when I defeat them in terms of their own premises, that they have to admit. Yes, that we are doing. We are defeating on their own principles. Uh huh. Therefore, we discussed about how Shri Lopurba defeated communism. I see. So, what is the solution to communism? Spiritual communism, as given in the scriptures. Is communism given in the scriptures? Yes. Interesting. Modern society takes the people as a whole, as the proprietor of a certain state. But the Vedic conception is Isha Vasamidam Sarvam. Everything is owned by Isha, the supreme controller. You may enjoy what is allotted to you by him. Do not encroach upon others' property. This is Ishopanishad Veda. The same idea is explained in different Puranas. There are many good concepts in the Vedic literature about communism. Uh -huh. I did not know that. Yes. For example, in the Srimad Bhagavatam, there is a description of communistic idea. It is described to Maharaj Yudhishthir. Uh -huh. Actual communism, what is called socialism, is there in the Srimad Bhagavatam. In the seventh canto, that in your house, if there is even a snake, see that he is not starving. Just see. If there is a lizard, if there is a snake, then see that he is not starving. You must give him food. Mm -hmm. In Srimad Bhagavatam, we find a seed for spiritual communism. There, Narad Muni explains that in this material universe, whether one be in a lower, middle or higher planetary system or even in outer space, all natural resources are manifested by the Supreme Lord. We must understand that whatever exists in this world was not produced by any human being, but everything was created by God. No sane man can deny this. Sri Isha Upanishad enjoins Isha Vasyamidam Sarvam. So these things are there in the scriptures. Communism is there. Uh -huh. So please tell me about the spiritual communism. Yes. See, the basic problem of this communism or materialism is that they are thinking that I am this body. So they forget the real I, that is the soul. Mm -hmm. Yes. If I understand that I am not this body, yet at the present moment I am engaged only to keep my body comfortable without taking care of myself, that is wrong. Similarly, this civilization is wrong. In this basic way, if I take care of your shirt and coat, but I don't give you anything to eat, then how long will you be satisfied? That is my point. That is a basic mistake. Material civilization means taking care of the body and bodily comforts. But the owner of the body, the spirit soul, gets no care. Therefore, everyone is restless. They are changing the isms from capitalism to communism. But they do not know what the mistake is. The communists think that if we take control of the government, everything will be adjusted. But the mistake is there. Both the communist and the capitalist are taking care of the external body, not the eternal identity of the soul. The soul must be peaceful. Then everything will be peaceful. Bhoktaram yajna tapasam sarva loka maheshwaram surudam sarva bhutanam jnatva amam shanti vrikshati. This means that one must know what God is because you are part and parcel of God. You already have a very intimate relationship with Him. Our business is knowing God. So, at the present moment, there is no information. People have no complete idea. Can communism be adjusted with some modification? Yes, I can take it in this sense. 
if communists idea is spiritualized not the state but god is owner then communistic idea will be fulfilled so this communistic idea is vague but it can be perfected so then the russian people who are communist they can uh, remain communist if they make it krishna center right the russians as people they are not communist they are not communist a certain class just like in india a certain class is communist the mass of people is not communist they cannot become communist it is not possible they they are not real communist real communist we are actually see all people from all over the world professing different religions different path of life still they are joined this is natural krishna community right there is no harm in becoming a family man or an altruist a socialist a communist a nationalist or humanitarian provided that one executes his activities in relation with ishavasya the god centered conception if we accept the whole world as a property of god make god centered communism the russians in propas times they are making the state center communism stena eva sa uchchate everything belongs to god therefore everything should be employed in service of god this is our krishna conscious philosophy mm-hmm. so basically instead of making state centered communism make god centered communism right so prabhu ji how to make uh, communism god centered what modifications are needed in uh, communistic philosophy as i said communist is not a problem it is good proposal but they are missing one point they are making lenin the leader if they make krishna the leader then communistic idea will be very fruitful mm-hmm. they are picking up a rascal leader but if they pick up a nice leader god the supreme dictator then everything is all right they are catching up a dictator but they do not know that he is a rascal number 1 but if he catches the supreme lord as dictator as krishna says sarva dharman parityajya then he will be happy immediately this question propad asked a professor in moscow that you are following communism and we are following say krishnaism but your leader is lenin and our leader is krishna so far the philosophy is concerned we have to accept a leader so there is no difference in basic principle of philosophy that we must have a leader now who shall be the leader and who will decide it regards to both of us we have got a leader now which leader is perfect if both of them are perfect then why there is difference of opinion one leader does not agree with the other leader so who will answer this question that who is the best leader leader you have to follow that you cannot avoid either you follow kant or you follow krishna either you follow lenin or you follow krishna what is the answer who is the perfect leader you cannot avoid leader either you say according to kant i say according to krishna your communism what is the difference between your communism and our krishna consciousness movement you have selected lenin as your leader master and we have selected krishna as our leader master so on the principle where is the difference the professor could not answer so the professor could not answer but he was impressed that actually what is the meaning of communism you simply change of change of master that's all is it not simple yes we have to accept krishna as our leader because he is perfect and we follow his program yes that's it then communism will be perfect now let's talk about the distribution the communists want to distribute everything equally to all as they need and they don't like exploitation or undue encroachment on others property now let's say how it goes in spiritual communism now in krishna science there is very nice conception of spiritual communism in the krishna science in the shrimad bhagavatam you will find that there was a discussion between narad and yudhishthir and narad was explaining that this manifested material world either in the higher planets or in this planet or in the outer space whatever wonderful things and resources material resources are there they are all manufactured by the supreme lord just try to understand everything in this world whatever there is that is not done by any human being that is done by god nobody can deny it isha vasamidam sarvam therefore all living entities beginning from the ant to brahma the highest human being or the highest demigod all of them they have got the right to use them they have got the right to use them now narad says that you can use all these material resources as much as you require but if you want more if you get more then you will become a thief and you are punishable just see the idea of communism 
everything in the world in this planet or in other planets just like people are trying to go to the moon planet in propas times the russians were trying to put their flag first so that if they go to the moon planet they will conquer just like the europeans they have conquered that tract of land america and they have put their flag on that so now they are trying to go to the moon planet but this putting i mean to say this digging the flag it is called ignorance this is called ignorance hmm? where you are putting your flag it is not your property it's god's property this is knowledge this is knowledge and if i think it is my property i must dig my flag here that is ignorance just if you throw in the street some bag of grains the pigeon will come but they will pick up only 5 6 8 10 grains and they will go away they will not take even one grain more than it needs as soon as he is satisfied to his heart's content oh i am full now oh he'll go away he'll go away he'll not stop similarly this is natural this is natural but if you put here a hundred bag of flour and if you ask people that come and take then somebody will take 10 bags somebody will take 15 bags somebody will not take any bags because if he is weak he cannot take so the distribution will not be equal that is our advancement of civilization the knowledge which the pigeons the cats and the dogs have got we are lacking in that knowledge that the whole thing belongs to the supreme lord and we can accept them whatever we need not more than that that is knowledge that is knowledge there will be no difficulty the whole world is made by the lord's arrangement that you have no scarcity everything is sufficient everything is sufficient there will be no scarcity provided you know the distribution the distribution is there is fallacy distribution one is taking more and other is starving but here is the perfect knowledge that ishavasam idam sarvam we have to take everything as god's property nobody's property and we can use things which are available by nature's product suppose there is iron or mine so everyone has got the whatever iron he requires he can take but if somebody makes the iron mine as his own property then he according to shrimad bhagavatam and he is he becomes a thief he becomes a thief and he is punishable because that is god's property nobody can create the iron mine we cannot create anything even in the economic laws we cannot create anything we can simply transform just like worker or laborer that's all suppose we manufacture a very nice table but the ingredients the wood and the instrument iron o that is supplied by god you cannot manufacture iron you cannot manufacture the wood so how why do you claim that it is yours this is ignorance this is ignorance so by culture of krishna science when we understand the krishna science then we become free from this ignorance and lord krishna recommends that by this knowledge you can very easily cross over the ocean of nescience ocean of ignorance the whole thing is we are suffering due to just like ignorance is no excuse in the law court suppose you have done something wrong and if you say to the judge so i uh, i did not know sir uh, this law oh that is no excuse you will be punished you will be punished now in the shastra in the vedic literature it is said that everything belongs to god everything is manufactured by god so everyone has right not all human beings even the animals everyone has got the right to live and use things as much as he requires but if he stocks more if he acquires more he becomes the thief and he is punishable now suppose if i say oh i do not know this law therefore i have accumulated so many things in my control oh that does not mean that you will not be punished you will be punished you will be punished this knowledge we require to know and people at the modern age they are lacking this knowledge so uh, how do we do then prabhuji we do not create anything you can as i said you can use but not more than what you need see suppose if you organize a one business that is for your enjoyment god has created anything that is for his enjoyment but you are sons of god you can enjoy the property of the father as far as you require not more than you cannot take more than that then other sons will claim and there will be fight you live 
you are son of god you live at the expense of god god has sufficient supply but don't try to take more and stock that is folly you eat you live very nicely there is no prohibition but you cannot take more than what you require this is bhagavad communism if you take more you will be punished our philosophy krishna consciousness tena taktena bhunjita the indians are trained up like that he is happy in whatever condition of life he is placed he doesn't protest any indian villager he will say god has given me this position that's all right therefore the modern man is complaining that in india this god consciousness has made them lethargic they do not do they believe on the destiny actually they do actually they do therefore from the very beginning you will find so nice philosophy literature but you won't find the modernized economic development big big house big big road no there was no such attempt formerly they were satisfied by tilling the ground getting food grains now they have started factories at the cost of thousands of men's labor some dictators getting money and enjoying life that is progress and these rascals laborers they are thinking that these men are getting profit cream of this business we are working why not take ourselves that is communism according to krishna conscious communism everything belongs to god just as the russians and chinese communists think that everything belongs to the state we think that everything belongs to god this is merely an extension of the same philosophy and to understand it one simply needs a little intelligence Why should one think that his state belongs to only a small number of people? In fact, this is all the property of God and every living entity has the right to use this property because every living being is a child of God who is the supreme father. In Bhagavad Gita 14.4 Lord Krishna says, Sarvayoni shikanteya aham bija pradabita I am the seed giving father of all living entities in whatever form they may live. all living entities are my sons but they stock more just like the birds and beast they are living on nature's condition the bird will go to a tree and eat some fruit but not more than he requires neither will he take the fruit at his home to stock for the next day or for black market no we have created all this nonsense situation by claiming god's property as ours this is the mistake but the rascal leaders they do not know what mistake they have committed in the beginning if someone stocks more than needed then he will be punished yes one can utilize god's property as much as he requires not more than that then he will be thief he will be punishable just like father's property each and every son has got the right to live at the father's protection ma gata kasya shiddhanam that is spiritual communism whatever wealth is there within this universe all belong to god and we are as sons of god we have got right to take advantage of this wealth but not more than what i require that's all this is spiritual communism if you take more then you become punishable this is the law of nature stain e vasa uchate in bhagavat it is written that everything belongs to god you take whatever is your necessity you take more than you will be punished this is bhagwat statement so now the business is to be capitalist he is taking more holding the whole stock at least in india it is not coming to market and people are starving so they will be punished the excess grain they are throwing into the sea so they will be punished spiritual communism don't take more just like the natural birds if you keep one bag of rice here he'll come but they will take 3 4 grains and they will go away and if you ask a man here is some stack of rice ah oh, i'll take immediately finished <laughs> one man will take it the whole stock everything oh i got it free let me take it but if the bird they are under natural law they know ah oh, i have finished i have got my belly filled up i don't require any more so god has given everything sufficiently if every man takes whatever he wants absolutely then there is no difficulty that is your complication but why there should be fight father's property of every son he take as much as he requires except father his property and take as much as you require don't take more that is real communism the material nature the mother and god is the father 
and we are all children that's all plain truth right and another thing is the spiritual communism regard every living entity and material communism is limited to human beings only mm -hmm. that is not perfect communism this planet belongs to humans that's all this is your communism this present communism is defective because the russians say that russia is for the russians or china is for the chinese why not for others why human communism living being communism if you take this world as belonging to human society that is defective it belongs to everyone it belongs to the tree community it belongs to the beast community they also have a right to live why should you cut the trees why should you send the bulls to the slaughter house this is injustice how can you gain justice by yourself doing injustice we have no krishna consciousness if you do not know that krishna is our original father and that we are all his sons the tree is my brother and the ant is my brother the bull is my brother the american is my brother the indian is my brother the chinese is my brother therefore we have to develop krishna consciousness we talk all this nonsense of universal brotherhood and united nations all nonsense either you acknowledge the father or else you have no idea of how to realize brotherhood or humanity therefore they are talking for years and years they are the same fools can't you see the united nations they have headquarters in new york they are simply talking nonsense that's all that is their business so unless there is full krishna consciousness there cannot be any improvement of the world condition your communism is not perfect by krishna consciousness you can make it perfect take for example that you are sympathetic to all living beings that they must eat but why you are eating animals they must eat also why don't you allow them to eat that is your defect we allow everyone to eat not only human beings but also animals birds beasts they should live comfortably and without any disturbance they must get their food that is our communism but where is your communism you are thinking of your countrymen only or in your country also only for human beings and you are sending other poor animals because they cannot protest to the slaughterhouse so why do you protest to the capitalist when they send you to the slaughterhouse you are sending these poor animals to the slaughterhouse so why do you protest you protest that the capitalist are slaughtering you so if you slaughter others why should you be afraid of being slaughtered yourself is it all right very correct the communists are thinking in terms of the human beings and that also within the state but krishna conscious person he is thinking in terms of all living beings vidya vinaya sampanne brahmane gavi hastini shuni jayava swahakecha in the bhagavat it is stated that a householder before taking his lunch he should invite on the street sir if anyone is still hungry please come at my place there is still food you can take it and he should see that in the household even the lizard he is not hungry even there is a snake he is not hungry this is vedic principle god consciousness that some or other one animal has become lizard maybe he is hungry so at my house he is why he should remain hungry give him some food nobody likes snakes but in the shastra it is said even there is a snake you should see that he is not hungry he is given some food so of course it is very high idea but it is the complete ideal of so called communism real it is not that nation american nation they are concerned with the human beings only or any nation not american everywhere and nation means the definition of native means one who has taken birth in that land that is called native so cow is also native so why this law that for the benefit of the human being the cow should be slaughtered the definition of native is one who takes birth in a particular nation so the cow is also a native then why should the cow be slaughtered the cow is giving milk and the bull is working for you then you slaughter them what is this philosophy in the christian religion it is clearly stated thou shalt not kill yet most of the slaughter houses are in the christian countries you talk on reasonable ground that you are in favor of giving everyone the same facility so what do you mean by everyone 
Why you are selecting only your countrymen? Why everyone means every living being? So what is their answer? So equal rights. Why not animals? Well, they are not as important. They will argue. I mean, they will say that they are not as important. They are not so intelligent. They are just animals. Animals. But it appears to me that there are many men like animals. So why you are giving facility to them? But uh, they can be elevated to the point of uh, being men again. So elevate them to the right point. Elevate them. You are elevating them only on the platform of eating, sleeping, mating. That is there in the animal. So if you have to talk this philosophy, our philosophy is that expanded not only human beings but animals also. Our philosophy is if there is one lizard in your room, I should see that he is not starving. This is our philosophy. Not only human beings but animals, even an insect. We supply little sugar in the holes of the ant. That is our philosophy. We take any living being is has the same propensity for eating, sleeping. So your economic problem is that supply sufficient eating, sleeping. Why not these animals? We have to speak on that platform. That our philosophy is so perfect that we do not neglect even an ant. Make this philosophy. Why you are limiting within a country or within human society? Expand it. Right. This is the idea of spiritual communism. In Bhagavad, these things are stated. How to feel spiritual communism? In the spiritual communism, the present communists, they are thinking of human beings only. And animals are being sent to slaughterhouse. Although the human being and the animal is born in the same land. Actually, they are all nationals. National means one who is born in that particular land. So why not these animals nationals? But because they have no Krishna consciousness, they cannot think so broadly. They think nationalism means it's limited to human beings, not to the animals, not to the trees. But when you become Krishna conscious, you understand that the trees, the plants, the reptiles, the aquatics, the human beings, the bees, everyone, each and everyone, part and parcel of God. These people are manufacturing communism. But in the Srimad Bhagavatam 7th canto, we will find a statement given by Narad Muni that if in your house there is a snake even, you should give him something to eat. Just see how the feeling, even there is a snake, what to speak of other animals. The ideals of communism according to Srimad Bhagavatam are based more or less on the oneness of the entire human society, nay, the entire energy of living beings. Right. Now let's talk about the proprietorship. Yes, Prabhuji, regarding proprietorship, it is accepted that everything belongs to God. But uh, how do we practically manage the proprietorships, say of land and everything? Isn't uh, the tendency there to exploit the man and take more profit? That must be. Not only the capitalists exploit, the laborers also exploit. Laborers exploit? Yes. One laborer is charging 5 rupees, another laborer is charging 10 rupees. That profiteering, exploiting tendency is everywhere. Why the laborer strikes? To make more profit. Do you mean to say because he is laborer, he is free from this profit making desire? No. That was perfect Vedic system that you, the land is supposed to belong to the government or the king. The king gives you the land. That you make production and give me tax, one fourth, that's all. So there is no question of profit. If you have produced one kilo, give one fourth kilo to the king as tax. That is real social system. According to our Vedic system, everything belongs to God and the king is supposed to be representative of God to manage things. So for his managerial work, he requires some money. Therefore, I have taken some land for my livelihood. So whatever production is there, I pay one fourth to the king for management. This is my system. As soon as the tax is realized in terms of pound, shelling, spence, whole difficulty arises. I have produced 10 months of rice and out of that, one fourth I give to the government or to the king. So I have no anxiety. If I produce 20 months, I give one fourth. If I produce 10 months, I give one fourth. If I don't produce, I don't give. This is perfect system. This ideology has no struggle. Whatever is produced, you pay one fourth. There is no question of struggle. If I have to pay some fixed tax, 10 rupees for this land, I have secured. But if I don't produce, I have no 10 rupees. There is struggle. Where I get this 10 rupees? 
then i have to take loan from somebody else that brings my anxiety but if this system is accepted then i if i produce i give you one fourth if i don't produce i have no anxiety that is perfect system hmm? you accept this ideal so there is no anxiety if i produce i pay if i don't produce i don't pay is it not better yes make this simple method that whatever you produce you give me one fourth that's all mao uh, prabhu ji he believes that whatever is produced uh, all should be given everything why all should be given that means he has killed my independence he says there should be no proprietorship there should be no private property no proprietor should be allotted proprietor that i belong you give me the king or the government gives me this land so that is my proprietorship just like i have taken this house so it is higher proprietorship i do not allow anybody to come here that is trespassing even the farms in china are collective the people work together cooperate to produce such and such product uh, they give the whole product to the state in return they receive their uh, lodging their clothes but that will not give them satisfaction that is artificial so they uh, need constant ideological brainwashing to maintain the state of activity that is foolishness if i know that this land belongs to me government has allotted me so i can develop in my own way i have got freedom wholesale dependence what is the value of this he believes that uh, that's a false idea this uh, yeah, idea of freedom or proprietorship that it only leads to exploitation and misery for others that's what he thinks misery for others if i have proprietorship of something then um, that means uh, someone else is deprived of that that's what he thinks why deprived he has got proprietorship you have got proprietorship i have got proprietorship why you are deprived because government has given me some land it does not mean that a fellow subject my brother should not be given as i have got he has got therefore our upanishad says tiyan tiyan bhunjita whatever is given to you by god you be satisfied that is vedic system therefore you find a poor man is also satisfied and a rich man is also satisfied the poor man thinks that god has given me this so i must be satisfied with this and execute my god consciousness and the rich man also thinks that god has given me this so let me be satisfied with this and save my time there is no competition see right prabhu ji if everyone is satisfied with what god has given to him then where is the equality of all someone is poor and someone is rich how will there be equality what's the communistic idea in all of it you see the aim of life is not material wealth aim of life is to go back home back to godhead right and this right everyone has got equally mm-hmm. either rich or poor rich or poor is by karma karma that is also equal rights but in present life everyone has got right to perfect the human life that is krishna consciousness mm-hmm. proji can you explain this yes you see maya is very strong in the name of philanthropy altruism and communism people are feeling compassion for suffering humanity throughout the world philanthropists and altruists do not realize that it is impossible to improve people's material condition material conditions are already established by superior administration according to one's karma they cannot be changed the only benefit we can render to suffering beings is to try to raise them to spiritual consciousness material comforts cannot be increased or decreased aha uh-huh. the living entities are being supported by the supreme father however one should be satisfied with the supplies allotted to him according to the isha upanishad tiyana taktiyana bunjita we should be satisfied with our allotment and not envy others or encroach upon others poverty we should not envy the capitalists or the wealthy because everyone is given his allotment by the supreme personality of godhead consequently everyone should be satisfied with what he receives on the other hand one should not exploit others one may be born in a wealthy family 
but one should not interfere with the rights of others whether one is rich or poor one should be god conscious accept god's arrangement and serve god to his fullest this is the philosophy of shrimad bhagavatam and it is confirmed by shri chaitanya mahaprabhu we should be content with our allocations from god and concern ourselves with advancing in krishna consciousness if we become envious of the rich we will be tempted to engross upon their allotment and in this way we are diverted from our service to the lord the main point is that everyone rich or poor should be engaged in god's service if everyone does so there will be real peace in the world the philosophy of the communist that everyone has equal rights or everyone must take share of the state equally that is basic principle of real communism according to our understanding god is the father material nature is the mother and we all living entities are sons of the father and mother so as sons everyone has right to live at the cost of father's property all living entities they are being supported by the father but one should be satisfied with the supplies allotted to him that is ishapnishad says tenadaktena bunjita there is no need of encroaching on other's property we should not be envious of capitalist or rich man because everyone is given his allotment by the supreme personality of godhead i should be satisfied with my allotment i should not encroach upon another's allotment but the exploitation idea is not there the same thing that nobody should exploit if one has become rich man that's all right that that is natural one is born in rich family from his very birth he is a rich man so why should we interfere his richness but everyone should be god conscious either the rich man or the poor man they must be god conscious and god consciousness means that the property i am owning or the position i am placed in that is by god's arrangement therefore my duty is to serve god in my position sthane sthita shudigatam tanu atmano bhir this is the philosophy of uh, of shrimad bhagavatam confirmed by sri chaitanya mahaprabhu sthane sthita we should stay in our place as it is allotted by god but our common culture should be shudigatam tanu atmano bhir we should hear about god and act accordingly it doesn't matter in which work then there will be harmony if we become envious that why this man has become rich i shall encroach upon him that is again another type of revolution or encroachment that is not required you remain in your position as you have been allotted but everyone be engaged in the service of the lord the another example is that the there are different positions of different parts of the body the head arm the belly the legs there are different parts of body doing different functions but the idea is how to maintain the body so if we even if we remain in different position that is we get from birth but we we should be engaged in service of the supreme the owner just like the hand is owned by the body therefore hand must work for the body the leg is owned by the body therefore the leg must work for the body so we are part and parcel of god and we should everyone should work for god and how we shall work that we have to hear from the position where we are and act accordingly then there will be real spiritual communism so the leg the head may be very important part of the body but you cannot neglect the legs if you want to keep the body in, in fitness then the brain must work nicely the hand must work nicely the belly must work nicely and the legs also must chatur varna mein asushtam guna karo mein bhagasha so actually classless society means when this brahman kshatriya vaishya shudra they work for krishna that is classless that is krishna consciousness the ideal of classless society can be achieved when people become krishna conscious aha uh-huh. oh this is the same concept as in varnashram uh, so basically varnashram is what you are talking when you speak of uh, real communism yes varnashram is it sanyas means he should distribute spiritual knowledge from door to door that is his business he has no family attraction he has nothing to think for his maintenance because the society is advised to take care of brahmacharis vanaprastha and sanyas just see this is spiritual communism one section of people the householders they have to maintain the other three divisions and that is varnashram vibhagasha spiritual communism everyone is engaged for spiritual advancement 
Grastha has to give alms to Brahmachari, to the Vanaprastha and to the Sanyas. Just see how nice communism. The one 25% group they are earning and they are maintaining 75 men. Mm-hmm. So everyone has right to serve and satisfy the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That is equally given. Even a Shudra can satisfy him. The communists say that if you work for the state, you will get satisfaction in return. But we say that if you work for Krishna and satisfy Krishna, then you will be satisfied automatically. <laughs> in any society, there must be a leader. There must be dictators. And there must be workers. But everyone should be satisfied. So they forget the difference. And when you satisfy Krishna, you will be satisfied automatically. So the communist teaching that you love Lenin and the capitalist teaching that you love Washington. So nobody is satisfied. Unless the love comes to Krishna, there is no question of satisfaction. Right. So the ideals of human society is broader than in the Middle Ages. And the world tendency is towards one state or one human society. The ideals of spiritual communism according to Srimad Bhagavatam are based more or less on the oneness of the entire human society, nay, of the entire energy of living beings. This Krishna consciousness movement is meant for not only uniting human society, but also all living entities. As it is stated in Bhagavad Gita, Pandita Samadarshina Vidya Vinaya Sampanne Brahmane Gavi Hastini Shuni Chaiva Pandita Samadarshina when one is actually Pandita, learned, he becomes Samadarshi. Vidya Vinaya Sampanne One learned Brahman, gentle Brahman. Vidya Dadati Namrata Education means one becomes gentle, sober, cool-headed. Therefore it is said, Vidya Vinaya Sampanne When one is learned, advanced in education, he must be very gentle, not haughty. So Vidya Vinaya Sampanne Kavi Hastini Ruchi, I think if everyone follows this principle of equal vision of a Brahman, then there will be complete peace in the world. Yes, whole world. Otherwise it is not possible. Communists and socialists are trying to propagate the philosophy that everything belongs to the masses of people or to the state. Such an idea is not perfect. When this idea is expanded, we can see that everything belongs to God. That will be perfection of the communistic idea. The purpose of Srimad Bhagavatam is here very nicely explained. Every one of us must be satisfied with those things the Supreme Personality of Godhead has allotted to us. We should not encroach upon the positions of others. This simple idea can be expanded in our daily lives. Everyone should have a piece of land given by the government and everyone should possess a few cows. Both these should be utilized for one's daily bread. Above that, if something is manufactured in a factory, it should be considered the property of the Supreme Personality of Godhead because the ingredients belong to the Supreme Lord. Actually, there is no need to manufacture such things artificially. But if it is done, it should be considered that the goods produced belong to the Supreme Lord. Spiritual communism recognizes the Supreme Proprietorship of the Supreme Lord. As Lord Krishna explains in Bhagavad Gita, it is further explained in Srimad Bhagavatam that no one should claim anything as his property. Whatever property one claims to be his actually belongs to Krishna. One should be satisfied with whatever he has been allotted by the Supreme Lord and should not encroach upon the property of others. This will lead to peace in the whole world. So, spiritual communism means, as I understand Prabhuji, one must accept God as our father and obey and surrender to his plan. Very good. Surrender. Sarva dharman parityajya. This is real life. Sharanagati, to surrender to God, to accept things which is favorable to God, to reject things which are unfavorable to God. Always maintaining conviction that God will give me protection and remain humble and meek and think oneself as one of the members of God's family. That is spiritual communism. Right. That was spiritual communism. And now, the western styles of management, in specific, the corporate or uh, the industrial management styles, like the systems management, TQM, etc., which will be talked about by Padmalochan Prabhu. Padmalochan Prabhu? Yes. 
he was taught about these topics in his engineering studies and he shall then take it further and discuss also about the implementation part too so i shall now pass on the stage from here on to him all right Yeah. Mm-hmm.